Welcome to Discover Film. I'm your host, Jeff Howard. And today's a really fun episode for me because we've got Angela Liu in here. Angela is the official photographer for two of our film festivals. That's Film Invasion LA and the Sherman Oaks Film Festival. She's also a filmmaker in her own right, and we're going to put a link to one of her films with this podcast. But I have to say she really impresses me because people who work the festivals are always great and enthusiastic about film, but Angela watches everything she can. She just loves film. She watches films. She takes pictures. She also participates in the Q&A at times. She's just a great presence at the film festivals. So I was really happy to have her in here and hear what her favorite films are. All right, without further ado, here's Angela's DF4Q. So I will count the first one. um, The first films... Because they're trilogy, so I love to put them together as You can one. make a trilogy one work of art, sure. Okay. It's the Before Sunrise, Before Sunset, and the Before Midnight. All right. Yeah. Cool. I, um, I heard about it for many, many years before um, I came to America. I had no chance to watch them because, you know, it's, it's, sometimes it's hard to find some movies you want to watch back in China. Um, so one day I discovered it's on Netflix. I was so excited. I started watching it. And I just can't stop crying. And it's, it's just so real. And the performance was just wonderful. And I love that Richard Linklater, he plays with time a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And... And so you didn't get to see it. So you heard about it when you lived in China. Yeah. But you didn't get to watch it till you moved to America and mm-hmm. had because you don't have access to Netflix in China, mm-hmm. right? No. At least not yet. Probably never. Never, because the censorship and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I imagine, are... does the government do their own version of, of Netflix where people can stream? Yeah, there are many websites like that, and they all have their own content. Yeah. But they probably limit the foreign content. Huh. They do, uh, but uh, Netflix is trying to release their films and TV shows in China just through our platform. Right. But they still have to cut down some of the contents. Sure. Yeah, because of censorship. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, it's a new world. Mm-hmm. But uh, that's great. I mean, it's great. Great that you made it out here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hey, well, what's your number two? Um, number two is, um, uh, Internal Sunshine and Spotless Mind. Oh, that's a beautiful movie. I know. I already see the pattern. You like the, a deeply personal film, yes. like a film about a very personal story with internal struggles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I love the movies that made me cry because, you know, after you watch the movie, the feeling is still lingering around you for many many days um sometimes just comedy or like a superhero movie they they can't they can't do that they can't touch your heart no the good ones do but yeah most of the time it's just a popcorn movie you walk out and you're like okay yeah no big deal whereas other things yeah you see well anything that makes you cry it's just such a release yeah i love that release and you can connect with it yeah yeah, especially that movie, um, Internal Sunshine, Spotless Mind. It's very interesting because in China, they uh, translate the title into different ones. One of the title is um, uh, Break Up Without Pain. Really? Yes. Wow, that's... Uh, that must have... Had, I just... That's such a good, completely different title. Yeah. Because it has nothing to do with the original title, but it's absolutely what the movie's about. I wonder if they helped choose that title. I don't know. I I think when they translate the title, they don't really consult the filmmakers. Wow. Well, they did a good job on that. Like I mentioned, my friends, they made... um, uh, uh, Resolution? Was it Resolution or... Or the endless, they translate the title into uh, two gay people um, break into hell or something. 
<laughs> but they're not gay. <laughs> oh, they're not gay. No, they're just really good friends. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, and and he posted Chinese.、Uh, I think it's translated by Taiwan. So they they post a poster on Facebook, and he、um, put down the translation of the title. And I was like, no, that doesn't mean they're gay. It means they're really good friends. That's like a slang in Chinese. When you say two really good friends, they super close together. You call them gay. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't mean gay, but yeah. But there's there's a there's something lost in that translation.、Mm-hmm, yeah, that's why I don't think they really consult the filmmakers about the titles. Right. So it's really just some some government official. Is just screening the movies and retitling them.、Um, maybe I don't know. Maybe the distribution company did it. Could be, yeah.、Mm-hmm. Wow, funny. You have a third, I believe. There's one movie I don't know how to pronounce the third word. It's called New York. Oh, Synecdoche. Yes. Synecdoche, yes. New York. Yes. Yeah, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Yes. That's such a bizarre film. Have you seen it? Yeah, I did see it. I believe I saw that with a Q and A with Charlie Kaufman. Oh, nice. After oh, two of the movie I love, both written by yeah, Charlie Kaufman. Yeah, you're a Charlie Kaufman fan. <laughs> and just because I love those weird concepts, and he always writes human being in a really weird way, but everybody has that quality, I guess. Yeah. Well, and Synecdoche is the first one he directed. Oh, he directed. He directed. That was the first time he directed. Instead of using one of the, I think there was always like one of two directors would do his stuff.、Mm-hmm. It's funny. I bother to look up. A synecdoche is a figure of speech in which a term for a part of something refers to the whole of something, or vice versa.、Mm-hmm. I guess I would need an example to know what that means. <laughs> But yeah, so you like that was quite that was God talk about a movie with layer upon layer upon layer. Yeah, and you can tell what's reality was a real show anymore. So the next one, you get to say a movie you think is underrated. So、mm-hmm. the common you feel that the common wisdom around town、mm-hmm. that most people don't respect the film as much as it deserves. All right. I will tell you the underrated movie that、uh, from your description. Sure.、Um, I think Passenger is underrated. You're not the first. Really? Yeah, the, I really need to see Passengers. Yeah, I love Passenger. I don't know why people think it's cheesy. I I know it's a little bit cheesy, but <laughs> people are saying it's not good. Yeah, you're the second filmmaker who's told me it deserves a second chance. Yeah. I guess people are just so used to watch so many actions, and、uh, from the very beginning, all the leads has to talk to each other or like be appear on the screen. But I think it's a really nice written and acted,、um, filmed, and I love the whole concept. I didn't see it, so I'm part of the people. I'm one of the people who、okay. the word of mouth on that film kept me from seeing it. Uh-huh. So I definitely have to see it.、Uh, after watching Passenger, I just can't trust Rotten Tomato anymore. Really?、Yeah. I mean, I trust it in general, but yeah, I don't trust it completely because、mm-hmm. I've seen some things in the '90s that I didn't think were good,、mm-hmm. and I've seen some things in the '70s that I thought were great. So yeah,、mm-hmm. I'm with you. Rotten Tomatoes is a guidepost, but it's not the end all. Yeah. Especially if you have a certain genre you prefer, you like. Intelligent dramas were, that are really emotionally honest.、Mm-hmm. I like all kinds of films.、It's、just I, I don't know what kind of film I don't like. Well, that's good. Just、um, hope the listener do not hate me or you don't hate me because I don't like Godfather's. Oh, oh! So you're <laughs> overrated as Godfather? Yeah. All of them? All of them. All of them. I fully support your choice. Thank you. <laughs> then again, I support any choice. Even if your most overrated was one of my favorite movies of all time, I'd still go, "Hey, you have every right to that opinion."、Yeah. I mean, film is in no way should there be complete consensus. Yeah. 
Which might be the problem with Rotten Tomatoes, right? Is you're mm-hmm. looking for consensus on art. True. Yeah. Picasso's not for everybody. Mm-hmm. But he's the best in the world that it ever was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the uh, the English uh, sentence, but uh, when I was in college, I learned this. Um, I can not agree with you, but I totally defend your rights to talk about it. Or yeah. Yeah, well, that's that's almost, we think of that as an American thing of, you know, I disagree, but I, I agree. Well, we either say we agree to disagree, mm-hmm. or you say, you know, I don't agree with that person, but I defend their right to say it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, okay, so Godfather, the trilogy. Hey, two trilogies. Yes, don't hate me. <laughs> I don't think people will hate you. And no one likes Godfather 3. You're really... Yeah. I didn't even watch it. <laughs> yeah, why would you? Why would you when everyone I says one and two I suffer from the are, first are, are one already. And people are saying the second go- second one is good. So I watched it. I'm like, ah, wasted my time. And I <laughs> didn't watch the third one. And it's kind of dated too, isn't it? Yeah. All right, well, question number four mm. is that lesser known film that you want people to seek out. Okay. Um... The movies I mentioned before, but I don't know if I'm going to put so in... So your a, friends' movies, actually, you want to just promote your your friends with Resolution, Spring, and... The Endless. The Endless. Mm-hmm. It's so. worth seeing... I mean, if you are a horror fan or, like, the weird kind of movie fan, you will love them. But I can see that some people, like, normal moviegoers might not appreciate. Because sometimes it's slow. But it has to build up to that point. Yeah. Yeah. But hey, Guillermo del Toro contacting them, that's mm-hmm. a pretty good endorsement. Those yeah. are So those are lesser known films people should check out. Should. Especially they can see the first two already. Yeah, so the first two are both on Netflix? Um, or is it Netflix, Amazon? Amazon, probably on Amazon Prime. Yeah. But if you want to know most recent film, I think people should go see it. Especially what happened this few days. Should go only the Braves. Oh really? Yeah, it's a movie I didn't even want to see it when I saw the trailers. Oh, of course, another hero, like a hero saving the world movie. But I want to see it. It just so touching, and it's based on a real story and firefighters who are fighting wildfires. Yeah, you should really go check tra- check it out. It's such a great movie. It has great review. It just didn't make enough money. Well, hopefully it did well internationally with the visuals. Mm-hmm. Well, it released in China, which is great. Release actually tomorrow in China. Yeah, because China only takes, what, like like eight movies a year from America for um, theatrical? I think more than that. Is it more now? Yeah. But it's very selective. Mm-hmm. I mean, for now. Yeah. It has to be uh, either good review or they can make enough money. Do all the superhero movies play? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> they make a lot of money. I can't believe Transformers still make tons of money in China. Transformers, mm-hmm. superheroes. World of Warcraft was did huge in China. Yeah, because we have a lot of players. Yeah. Yeah. My friend who played a wolf for a long time and he went to four like four times just to go see the movie. Like mm, I can't understand you guys. <laughs> I love Lara Craft, but I only just watch once. Alright, well I figure <laughs> let me just quickly ask you. Since you are in the unique situation, I hope you don't mind being being uh, asked, but I'll probably Maybe I'll go back and start because you mentioned China in some of your answers. Do you want to give a brief little bio for me to put at the beginning just so people know you're not just the official Sherman Oaks. (laughs) You're not just the official Sherman Oaks Film Festival and Film Invasion LA photographer. Mm -hmm. You are a filmmaker who grew up in China and then came to film school in America. But go ahead. Give your share how, how you managed to do that. That can't be an... You've got to be a rare, rare achievement, rare person. Mm. Well, nowadays, it's not very rare anymore. No? Okay. <laughs> no. 
But sure. Um, my name is Angela, Angela Liu. I'm a filmmaker now based in LA, but I'm from China. I came here like seven years ago for film school. And after that, I wanted to stay here for a little bit and、uh, get some experience. And life happened. I met my husband. I got married. Now I'm about to have a child with him. <laughs> Due in February.、Um, now I'm just stay here in America.、Um, it's very different、um, to be in two different countries. To see the industry, the life, the culture of the people in the, these two countries, and China's movie, how to say it, like it's very strict on the policy. You you can't touch. Like on subjects. Some、matter. subjects, yes, but you know, filmmakers. Some filmmakers are pretty smart. They still touch on the subject, but they don't do it too obviously. There are some really brilliant Chinese movies,、um, but I guess Chinese movie cannot really release worldwide. Has two reasons: one is the censorship, another one is the language. Culture does not matter that much because we can understand cultures, we can learn cultures, but just the language.、Um, I understand the American don't like to read subtitles. That kind of block a lot of Chinese, good Chinese movie come、yeah. to America. Yeah, but I mean, we have the subtitles for French and Italian films. Yeah, but those movies are being being seen by moviegoers,、yeah. being seen by movie lovers. Yeah, not really the not the big not the public. Yeah, not the yeah. I guess dubbing just people just don't like dubbing either.、Mm. Dubbing, you lost the the soul of the movie. Do you think that when you say the censorship, do you think the censorship makes the films less appealing over here because they're censored, like because the filmmakers don't get to deal with topics, or or is that not even a? The censorship is more、uh, is more for a movie released in China because if you make a Chinese movie, you have to.、Um, Get permission from the government, so they have to. The first step, they have to read your script, and they have to censor everything first. And you make it, and they censor again before you release it. You have to censor again. Right.、Yeah. So, so the, the government itself is green lighting. Yeah. Is choosing what gets made and what doesn't. Yeah. So there's just no such thing as independent films. There. They are. Um. It's just very hard. You ha- sometimes you have to do it like under the radar, under the radar. Yeah, off the radar. Off the radar.、Mm. There are wonderful films, but got bended.、Um, some movies are great, but they have to change their ending. They have to cut some of the scenes out. There is a really good movie that's going to release really soon. Will be releasing in America too, but only in AMC's. It's called Fan Hua. Or youth is made by one of the best directors in China, Feng Xiaogang.、Um, it's supposed to release in October. I guess something happened and, and touched some really sensitive subjects, and they have to、uh, delay it to December right now. It's sad. It's a tough time, but I guess but there's more hope than ever for the Chinese. Artistic community of、um, there's definitely more money, more money. Yeah, more money, but、um, huh, I don't know because directors are struggling. They can't make movie they really want to talk about. For example, I was working on this synopsis for、um, for a tourist place in China. It's kind of collaborating with the government. Uh, local government. I have a character. He stole some stuff from the main character, but he's from local.、Mm-hmm. So the producer said, "No, you cannot have any local people to be the thief." Right. The bad person has to be a foreign, foreign to this 
neighborhood. Yeah, but the problem is, the whole point of him stealing thing is to reveal later on he's actually a nice person, but he's doing it because he he has to. Right. You can see just from the local censorship or just the censor we did ourselves before even send it out. We're already kind of chopping our limbs off and before we even make anything. Which is interesting, but I, I guess like a the little bit of film history I can remember, it was uh, Hollywood had a you know we had a very strict censorship system. Really? Yeah, in the forties and fifties, there was you know the film board. Mm. Um, yeah, they were very you know, and we opened up. What can you not show back then? Like back then, they even had things like even a husband and wife couldn't be in the same bed. They had to have a that. bedroom with two uh-huh. beds. That's and ridiculous. Then I, I don't know if it's true, but I think it's true that there was a point where um, there could be one bed, but they could never lay on it. <laughs> and if they were both sitting on it, they each had to have a foot on the floor uh-huh. to show that they were not going to have that evil, horrible sex that we don't want anyone to think about. <laughs> hey, that's actually one thing I would like to talk about. Sex and violence. Sex is something everybody will experience in their life at some point. Hopefully. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hopefully for some people. And, and um, everyone exists people. because of it. Yeah. But violence. Well, sure, there's some like violence that look beautiful, quote unquote, beautiful. Um, and people love watching violence, but in real life, they're not good. You shouldn't no. be around violence. Uh, the glorification of violence on film is a, is a difficult subject when you really get into it. Yeah. But the censorship in, in America and in China, violence is not censored that much compared to sex. Yeah. I don't understand why people think sex is evil. I have no idea. I have no idea why people think it's. I have no. I guess. I guess it goes down to puritanical roots of this country, mm-hmm. and that because in Europe, I think in some other countries, I think Scandinavia, Europe, they they censor violence more than they censor sex. Mm-hmm. But America is just a, a a culture that's very. Sex negative, I think, is the term now, right? They're just oh, and there's like a sex positive. Yeah, there's right. sex positive, which is if nobody's getting hurt, yeah, and everybody's consenting and happy. Mm-hmm. Um, this is healthy human activity, mm-hmm. and you know, love stories. Yeah, you know, it's kind of a, you know, sex is an important part of love, uh, says the pregnant lady. <laughs> <laughs> There you have it. That was Angela, and I'm going to try to say her last name right, Angela Liu, uh, not just sharing her DF4Q and letting us know what movies she loves most, but she also shared what it was like to grow up a bit in China and come to America for film school and end up staying for love. Honestly, how great a story is that? And it makes it pretty obvious that basically our impression of China is completely inaccurate. And we have a lot to learn. I'm happy to say that at discoverfilm.net, on the page for this podcast, there's a link to Angela's website where you can see several of her films. Hopefully you watch them and enjoy them as much as I did. And as long as I'm talking about the website, of course you can go to discoverfilm.net and watch a lot of great shorts and see links to some great features. And at discoverfilm.net, you can also link over to the Film Invasion LA website or the Sherman Oaks Film Festival website. And I think that wraps it up. Thanks for listening.